Welcome back to the show, listeners, and to all of the new listeners. I'm glad to have you guys here. So instead of going through my normal opening that I do in every single podcast, I just want to kind of get right into it. So today is a very, very special day on the show. We have our very first guest here virtually with us. Woohoo! Hey. Um, she is such an amazing woman, you guys. I met her a few years ago at First Forum headquarters. And she first struck me with her just freaking awesome Swedish accent. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Um, And then as I got to know her more, she just has the absolute biggest heart along with like the most amazing legs and most amazing arms, you guys. (laughs) Just an incredible body all around. But she just has an amazing heart and wants to help so many people. And she's here on this earth doing amazing things, like impacting the lives of so many women that she works with in her IB Fit Coaching crew. And we'll talk more about that today. But I get to have her here on the show with us today. And so that you guys all get to experience a glimpse of her awesomeness firsthand. Ada, welcome to the show, girl. So excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. And that was a really huge um introduction of me thank you for painting that picture like i'm the having a big heart that means a lot because i mean i look up to you you are such a badass queen i really love seeing other women that's super strong and that really plays on the strength of women and that you really uplift other women too it's just yeah you're you're a queen Thanks, girl. Man, I appreciate you. (laughs) I'm super stoked to kick this off. So I know that you've been doing all of the things, nutrition, fitness for a really long time, um, really long time. And you've done some incredible things back in Europe, back home. Like I said, she's from Sweden, guys. Um, She's won, you know, incredible, like gold medals, championship titles. You did the bodybuilding world. You retired. You moved to the States. Now you're doing fitness for the passion that you have for it now. So do you mind taking the audience and myself? I just want to know more about your journey and more about you. So share your fitness and journey with us and and just why fitness is just so important to you. So, I mean, my fitness journey started when I was very, very young. Um, I, just like anyone else in the teenage years, you try a lot of sports, you like them or you dislike them. I just fell in love with lifting things and that was like my top thing doing in school but also I had a neighbor um, he had this huge yard with he was a trucker so he always had a lot of stuff and he always needed help so I was like carrying his tires and logs and stuff and I was just like wow I am strong I'm only 13 years old but I'm strong this is cool um, <laughs> and then I figured out that there was a gym um, in my small town and it was like the only bodybuilding town that owned that gym. And he was like the real deal. He knew his stuff. He was very, very like strict and like, Oh, don't do that. And don't do that. And yada, yada. And he took me in when I was 15 and he started to guide me and he said, well, you're going to turn 15 this year. So I will let you in. So I was actually 14. Um, but I mean, who is consistent with anything really when they are during the teenage years? Like, yeah, I did a lot of things, uh, but it always went back to me lifting weights or lifting anything because I just, I naturally just felt strong from the get go. And when I was 19, uh, I moved from my mom and dad, um, to really like, show them that I could stand on my own two feet. I come from a very big family Um, and it was only my dad working. So we, we weren't like privileged to be able to play all sports. And we kind of entertained ourselves with a lot of things when I grew up and being five girls growing up together. It's kind of like, I love being around my, my friends that was male. (laughs) So I've always been a little bit more like, I have a really easy time to connect with guys. Um, uh, it's it's always been that, that like that probably because I've always been surrounded by women. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that is, but when I moved, I just found a group of people. We met up in the nightclub settings. We all were part of people's because I was, I worked 10 years of my life from 14 to 20, that's 11 years, 14 to 15, 25. I worked in the restaurant business. Um, mm-hmm. 
So I was always in that kind of space too of partying and stuff like that. But every single day I went to the gym with my boyfriends and my girlfriends that it was one or two, <laughs> uh, but we were like a crew. We were like a gym crew and we had so much fun. Um, and unfortunately my dad passed away um, when I was going into my 20th year. Uh, and that was like a big turnaround of, of events for my life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I just kept going really uh, and working, working out a lot, a lot to kind of release the mental stress that I was going through of losing my dad after also losing a lot of other people in my life. There was like a couple of years where I just lost a lot of my closest people. Um, and I guess that's how I coped with, with grief um, of yeah. actually just like building myself stronger from the outside and in, even though I always say like, build yourself from the inside and out. But for me, I kind of did the reverse way. Um, and I just fell in love with being in control of the weights because I felt like if I can control something that is working against me, I will feel so much stronger and more capable. So it just happened. And I just, it's like an endorphin rush or a, a runner's high for other people. That's how I feel when I lift. So yeah. It is just my thing. <laughs> it's just simply yeah. my thing. And man, is it your thing when you're inside? Like, if you guys start following her, I'll put all the links um, to your socials in the description below. We'll talk about it at the end of the podcast. But if you guys start following her, man, does she make it her thing? She is such a badass. When you guys watch her on Instagram doing your workouts, I'm like, I gotta channel some of that energy into my <laughs> workout. <laughs> all the way across the states. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I feel like um, it really picks something up for me that I'm like, oh, okay, I am capable and I'm going to lift this mother F from that point to that point. I'm going to do it in such a good way because I'm really feeling it with all of my being. Um, but yeah, I actually went up to um, like 2013. We went to look at a show together. Like it was not our first show going as a crew to look at other people competing but it was like the first one that really hit home for me. And I understood that, wow, this is maybe something that I really want to do. Um, because we we had just had this greatest, biggest buffet from the hotel that we were staying at. Um, it was because in Sweden, hotel buffets is a thing. Like you have to. And I was so full, <laughs> like extremely full. <laughs> um, and in the mid, like at the, like the pause of the competition, they had like this, um, an audience competition and the guys didn't let me have a choice. So they kicked me up and stood me up when they asked, does anyone want to compete in the Mrs. Washboard? And they pushed me out of my chair and I didn't even realize that, okay, a few moments later, I'm going to stand there on the stage showing my abs. That was the first wait, time I wait, won wait, a trophy. Wait. <laughs> no way. Wait, pause. Hold on a second. So your first time winning and getting on stage and having a trophy in your hand came from somebody pushing at your friends, pushing out of your chair and yeah. telling you to get on stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't give oh, me yeah. a choice. Oh yeah. See that there's a part of you from when you were younger pushing tires, which I need to pause on that thought really that right there, because right there at that age, you wanted to help people. You were helping him, right? And he took you under your wing to come into the gym and, and all that jazz, which that's just amazing. Because guys, when I say she's the biggest heart, she's the biggest heart. But then too, so you, and then you knew from lifting the tires, you were like, dude, I'm strong. I know I can, I can do anything, right? Basically that mindset at such a young age, that's huge. And that carried you through to getting pushed by your friends to get on stage. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And I won uh, 50 bucks and a trophy. And I still have the trophy at my mom's place. Yeah, it's it's such a big memory for me. Because, I mean, I was full. You know, like when you have a food baby full. And yeah. I still went up there and I showed my abs. And everyone was like, wow. Only you would be able to eat, have a food baby. Get on stage and show your abs. <laughs> you, I'm a foodie. <laughs> uh, the year after... I competed my first very show on that very stage, the same competition, got the same amount of points as number one, but they placed me as number two. Uh, 
politics uh, even there. Uh. Um, but I, for me, it was just like I did not even expect placing at all because I did it all of my own. Because I, at that time, I had been a coach for like three years, but I never coached anyone to the stage yet. That was still like super new to me. So I was like, I only like, I did all everything on my own. I had no idea what I was doing, but hey, here I am. And then um, the woman that then came to coach me, she found me on that uh, competition and she said, I want to take you on my wings and we're going to do this together. And together with her, uh, the next show, a couple of months later, I placed fifth, I think. Uh, yeah, fifth. That was such a bad experience. Such a bad experience. Like, it was the craziest competition I've ever done because it was not well planned backstage. I didn't even have my shoes on when coming up on stage. So, yeah, I understand. My my uh, bikini bottoms were too low, so it didn't, like, take me my physique to a better state. Like, no, it was oh not good. Goodness. Was that just because you were feeling rushed or was it because yeah. of the – yeah. So yeah, we were, like – Running a little – got it. Yeah, the, it was not a good setup of a show at all, unfortunately. But it was still fun. Don't get me wrong. It was fun. Uh, but I totally get that I didn't place higher. A week later, I go to compete in the biggest, like, novice um, competition there is in Sweden. And I won that in my category. That's awesome. Was that, so was that w- With categories for bodybuilding over there, is it – like, did, was it women's physique? No. Or was it like figure? No. So they, More like they figure. More yes. Like figure. Got it. But in Sweden, on that level, uh, which is like amateur level, it is called right. body fitness, which doesn't really make sense because we don't have fitness. We have athletic fitness where you have to do different types of like bench, shins, and like a, a what do you call it? Like an obstacle course race kind of oh. so we don't have that flipping and gymnastic thing we rather have like you have to show that you're strong and that you're fit in got it yeah so we have that but i did the body fitness which is the same posing and everything as figure so i'm a figure former figure competitor i guess okay and so that was that your last show that you did no that was my number th- three and then I took a year off to like really build myself and get back into a good groove of homeostasis you know balance um didn't go so very well but I did it (laughs) um but the year after that or is it two years yeah two years after that I actually went back in competing and I did the Swedish national championships and placed first and then I placed first, first at the added. Nordic, <laughs> the Nordic championships as well. So I'm a Swedish and Nordic champion. And then I got invited to do the European championships. Um, or well, before that, I won, I won a third one as well. So I have four wins in total. Um, and then I did uh, the European and placed 10th. And I shouldn't have competed that time. I was so close on pulling out because I didn't feel good. I wasn't in a good place. Um, So I just shouldn't compete at all. But I did because it was too late to withdraw from the competition. So I just put my mind to it. And then I went and it still was good. I mean, 26 girls in my worst shape, place 10th. I'm kind of okay with that. It's it's never been about winning for me. Not even once. Elaborate on that. What was what was it all about? What what why why compete? <laughs> the glam. <laughs> the glam. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, you pulled off well. <laughs> the feeling. No, seriously though, the feeling of stepping up on stage, all made up, all with your hair, and in a very shiny, nice bikini, showing mm-hmm. off what you built. Mm-hmm. And you like. I don't know. I think I just from the very get go was very, very aligned with the fact that people are different. And if you are one of those who actually make up your mind to go up on and stand there and say, hey, judge me in comparison to the others, you need to be okay with that. And 
all I could do was, okay, just bring your A game. It doesn't matter how everyone else is looking like. If they like you, they're going to give you good points. Love that. I just always enjoyed the feeling of having a date to kind of work really hard to, uh, to get to my best shreddedness um, or just ba- best shape. Because in figure, it's not always about being the most shredded. It's about having it. You need to be so symmetrical, so balanced. You have to have the, the way of being. You need to have the aura. And then you have to be ripped on the right places, I guess. I was never the most ripped. But for the four wins that you had, you were symmetrical though, right? Like you have, for the four wins that you did win, they, they judged you basically off of your symmetry, your being symmetrical and the level of leanness you did bring to the stage, obviously beat the other girls. Yeah. Yeah. So that just unpacked pretty much your entire journey there. Pretty much badass from start to finish from being a teenage girl who was, you know, flipping tires to like, I'm going to go step on stage. I'm going to own my shit. I'm going to bring the glam. I'm going to bring the confidence. So I know there is a decent amount of people listening to this podcast who um, are interested in bodybuilding, have done bodybuilding. And they have questions in terms of, which you mentioned in some of those aspects there. So I want to unpack a couple of things. When you talk about like leading up to the show, you said that was one of the reasons why you love stepping on stage, right? Was second to the glam. It was you're going to put in the work for the couple of weeks, months to get ready to step on stage. What do you experience in that time frame? Uh, everything. You experience absolutely everything about yourself and about other people and especially about your body. Like our, our beings are so unique and so cool. And to at some point in time, just really put yourself to the test of doing uncomfortable things. It is just like so self-developing that it's just like top tier level of, I don't know. It's just, for me, it was just like, okay, I'm going to challenge myself because that is what, what bodybuilding is about. Cause you can never, as I said, compare yourself to others because you, you don't know what the judges will like, but during that time of getting there, there's going to be so much work on yourself to be able to cope with the different things. Because it's not only going to be days when you feel like, wow, I am not heading in the right direction or today I'm so tired and I still need to put in the work. I still need to do my normal daily job if you're not a professional. So it's just like, it's a lot lot to actually handle and take care of. And that's really hard. You're learning so much about yourself. You're learning so much about your mindset. You're learning so much about what you're fully capable of. And like, I think elaborating too, on it's a lonely road unless you have friends or a boyfriend or somebody who knows what you're going through like it's you versus you every single day so I actually do think that many people rely too much on other people we are uh an animal that moves in groups like I'm totally fine with that and But I just think that if we focus on ourselves first, that sounds very selfish, I know, but keep me, let's keep going here because it's not. If you just focus on the things that you need for your being to be feeling good, to be balanced, you will just take care of other people way better and you will be able to, you will be able to handle problems that comes your way so much better and stress will not agonize you in the same way as if you are not in a good place and I think that people around you will always be super important and I've always been so so blessed with the people that I have around me because they are such amazing human beings but that also makes me want to be a better person too which makes me need to focus on myself to make sure that I can greet them at the same way that they greet me. So during a competition diet, which is an extreme diet, it's not something that I recommend for to anyone that is not willing to actually go the full length of uncomfortableness because it is uncomfortable. 
Um, Amen, sister. <laughs> it's freaking Say uncomfortable. That <laughs> Say that louder for the audience. <laughs> it is so uplifting too, because it is when you understand that you are capable of, of doing something like that, that you're like, holy shit, Sherlock, life ain't too bad. And this is something that shows for me. So I better not whine about it, honestly. Yeah, so. dude. Oh my God, babe. Spot on. Spot on there. It's like if there's anything to take away from a competition prep and the journey that you're on, it is definitely learning and uncovering your best self because – And also I feel like if there's one way that you, if you're going to take it seriously, like you said, like it's uncomfortable and you have to take it seriously. If you're going to go to the extreme, go to the extreme, full send, be proud of yourself for going that far, stepping on stage and doing all of the things. But if you do stick to the extreme, you do get ready in the right way. You're there giving your best when you step on stage. Not only do you learn so much about yourself, but man, there's so much discipline in those actions on a daily basis that you build for yourself that don't you feel like that can just like literally why you're so successful as you are now still maintaining your body. You've most likely built some of that discipline habits during competition that that carry through your whole lifestyle, right? It, that is spot on <laughs> from your end. Because honestly though, like, I think that what, when it comes to discipline and creating this type of lifestyle that we live, both of us, um, and I feel like the people that find that really hard to find are the people that don't dare or don't, aren't capable of pushing themselves to that, to that space in time when you can actually experience the wins from it. It's all about unexperience. And everyone can get to exactly where we are of being disciplined and going to the gym or eating the some type of food that works well with your body, but they just haven't experienced it yet. And that's okay because there's so many things I haven't experienced yet, but I cannot be mad on myself if I don't try. And that is a big thing in a lot of people right now that they are not willing, they might be willing but they might not know how to, and they might not feel totally ready for it. And when something is super unknown, it's even harder for us to get there. Absolutely. So to carry that thought there, we can lead into talking about, you know, coaching and you coach women. And so to carry that thought into this, what do you feel like is the biggest thing that, that women do struggle with that, you know, that can we know we're on the other we're on the other side, right? We've gone through all of the challenges. We've endured all of the uncomfortableness to changing our body composition, to building muscle, right? So we we see the outcome that a lot of women want to accomplish, right? Because we're there. We've done it. So what do you feel like is the biggest thing that the biggest hurdle and maybe too that you had to overcome or that you feel like women have to overcome to get to that other to get to that result that they want to accomplish. I think that one of the pros and one of the cons of being a woman is that we are very emotional. We are a being of more tenderness and more love and especially on how other people see us. That is a really big thing for us. And our society is still in some weird way in a in a in a age where women cannot have muscles, where muscles are seen as manly, even though newsflash, men and women are human beings. Human beings is an art, not an art. It's a species which has muscles. We are just women and men has never been utilizing them the same same way. But nowadays, women has a choice. We can go to a gym as well. We had never been able to do that before because it it was a a space for men to be able to be strong enough to do their work if they had a a very labor-related work. Women have been home taking care of household and kids. And, And I get that. And I'm not taking anything away from that because I think that we are really good for that because we feel so much. And we dare to feel or we dare to express that we feel. But I also think that that is one of the things that holds us back a little bit. 
because we care a little bit too much of what other people think or that we think that they will think about us if we do. And I think that women hasn't yet, in general saying, yet experienced how uplifting and self, um, self-esteem self hiring it can be to be physically strong. I got, yeah, that's, I think that's spot on. I think that women hold opinions of others too clo- closely. And like you said earlier, that we need to stop relying on people. We need to just start thinking for ourselves and what we want to accomplish and know that what we want to accomplish, we're fully capable of accomplishing if we put our mind to and let all of the opinions and judgments and criticism and all of the thing fade away. I mean, you know, I, I think that's so spot on. Um, and I think coming, you know, it'd be an inspiration to hear this answer from you. How do you handle, I'm sure you get it. I mean, social media is social media. People have all of, there's like, what, what do they call it? Like the, 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 the ninja trolls. keyboarders or the trolls, <laughs> the trolls with the keyboard ninjas. <laughs> they, man, they come in hot. But how would you, like, yeah, I'm sure you've gotten comments being like, you look like a man or okay, I know I do. So how how do you handle that um i mean my 20 year old 20 year old self would say this sucks this is not fair and that would hold me back but i'm in my 30s now and i am more comfortable with my own skin than i ever been in my whole darn life and i could not care less of an insecure person on the other end says about my physique because we obviously don't think the same That is my, like, if I'm going to be a little bit aggressive and just get to the point. No, but you know, I love that. Because like, why do you think that? Why do you feel that way? Like, why do you feel that you just don't care? (sighs) Because I am so fed up with feeling the need to fit in. I, I can no longer relate to that girl that I once were always trying to please others. I still do. I am the biggest people pleaser. Not that I know. I know a few that's even worse, but I just kind of transcended that energy into my business instead of actually caring for others. And when my, I feel like one of my jobs in life is to really encourage women to go out there and just be like, I ain't taking that because I am here for me. I am not here to please your eyes. And that is something, if I feel like I cannot kind of take on comments like that myself, how can I teach that to others? So for me, when someone says, hey, you like, you look like a man or Ooh, gross or oh, that's too muscly for being a female, I'm like, according to you, but according to me, and to biology, <laughs> muscles is something that we all have. And and honestly, though, if we look at it this way, if they say that I'm a man, what do they say about the guys that don't have the muscles that I do? Are they called females? Because they don't have a, a, a developed physique. In my head, it just doesn't add up. So when people comment me stuff like that, I'm like... <sighs> Oh, I wish you knew better. It's it's rather that I feel like sad for them or even worse. What what I have found myself doing because when people give that to me, I am more worried what that maybe teenager, 20-year-old or new to this lifestyle woman sees when she reads that because I know how hard it was for me in the beginning. So if she sees that insecure man writing that on my 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 posts and she reads that and she feels that it's directed to her how can she handle that and that makes me sad and frustrated yeah spot on you're so spot on and 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 two the women need to know that like the women the people that are commenting that the guys that are commenting that not only all of the things that you said but in addition they're just insecure 
They're insecure and wish they could look like you. They wish they could have the discipline and the hard work and the motivation and the effort to do what you've done, right? And to transform your body. They wish they could do that because I bet you if I've had people that are like, yeah, I clicked on their their page and it, you know, sending love to these guys. I don't want to like bash them, but it's like, you know, guys, just put in the work, you know, put in the work. That's what it takes. If you, you just instead of shaming somebody like that's like we are we're here to lift each other up don't shame people because of the hard work they put in to change their body right everyone is so differently built and honestly if I compare myself to any other guy that works out as many hours as I do as hard as I do he's going to be twice my size and why is that why is that let's elaborate on that because I'm a woman I don't have the same freaking hormone setup as a guy do but that does not mean that I can still look the best that I can or that I can lift the way that I can. But again, I am not trying to become anyone else than me. So therefore, I'm also not annoyed anymore. The only reason, again, why I'm annoyed when people write that is because I know people are watching my comments and I don't want a woman that kind of wants to look like the two of us. I don't want her to see that because maybe she cannot cope with that just right now it's i love it's that's your heart man i love it ida you're such a sweet like that nobody thinks about that stuff like as deep as like that's that's deep you're you're concerned about a woman who it may be feeling insecure wants all of these things aspires to look like you or i and they see the comment and then that could easily deter her from yeah. wanting to embark on her journey that's pretty much how i feel and and i mean trolls will always be trolls and again it's just like People will always also have different opinions and I'm okay with that. I am not like, just because I train the way that I do or teach the way that I do does not say that I expect everyone to look the way that I do or train the way that I do. I'm totally fine with that because I cannot in my wireless imagination, even picture myself start to play soccer, for example, because I don't like footballs or like I cannot even handle balls. Like, how do you even do that? I'm not <laughs> and whenever people can understand that it's fine to have different opinions, things will go uh, way easier for everyone. So let's talk about, so you did all the bodybuilding, you went through all of that jazz. I know you mentioned there that there was like a year where you were trying to get your body back to homeostasis and just like, it was a tough year. And then I want you to elaborate on that a little bit because I know that there's some people that come off of a competition and they're like, you know, I mean, I came off of my and 25 pounds back in one month. I'm like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> so elaborate, share, because I want people, people will relate with that that have competed or want to compete so they can understand what they could expect. What happened in that year? I mean, I think... Uh, before I forget to say it, but I think the most important thing is when, whenever you go into a competition state of mind and like, okay, I'm going to compete, I'm going to find myself a coach and I'm going to do this right. One thing that you really should consider is making sure that that coach will still be there when you're done. It's yes. so important to have that person that keeps you accountable, that helps you reverse diet and helps you with your mental game. because. Trust me, you're for X amount of weeks are going to fight your hardest to become your leanest. You're going to focus so much on getting these shreds, shreds, <laughs> shreds. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're going to have to focus on returning to a healthy body fat per uh, percentage because it ain't healthy to be in a competition uh, body fat percentage. It's just not especially for women. Yeah, it is. Especially when you, you go through all of that for all of the time to lead up to show day and you're like, Oh man, I just want to maintain and keep my body. But you, that's not good. It's not healthy. It's not sustainable. It's so extreme. Like you've mentioned earlier that you just cannot maintain that physique. So what, yeah, share a little bit more of what happened. Like, how did you get your body back to homeostasis? What did you have to go through? I mean, I honestly, though, I don't think that it ever went back to normal until like a couple of years ago now when it's so many years ago since I last competed. Because, I mean, I went off, I competed the entire 2015, right? And then I went off and I did not keep my coach as close to me as I should have. And she did not really 
um, put an interest into that either. It's not not her fault. I just I was just too new, right? And I was like, hey, but I I can do this by myself. Like I'm a coach too. I know, but no, it doesn't matter if you're a coach or if you're well experienced. It's always good to have that person. But then I started to compete again. Uh, was it late 2016? And that also went on for, because the first year I competed, that was like 56 weeks of dieting because I had so many competitions. Holy moly, if y'all on video, my jaw just dropped. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it was a long, it was a long, 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 long diet. So I was so over it. Like I was so over being in the state of pain because it's painful. And you're so tired and just like, I don't know, it's a nice feeling at the same time, but it's also a little bit dreadful. Um, but then 2016 also became very long because I won and then I won again, which took me to another one that came in 2017 in May. So my last competition was in November, end of November. And then I did a big photo shoot for a big magazine in mid-December. And then May, December to May, and you need to kind of either go off a little bit or you keep going a little bit. And that's when it kind of got a little bit not good for my body. But it's always hard to go from the state of, okay, let's let's first get shredded and then let's get normal again. And it's not, it doesn't even matter if you do it correctly or if you overeat everything and gain all those 25 pounds in an instant it will still be tough what chose you to um you know you you did all those years and then you decided to retire you were you know i know we were we were catching up before the podcast and you were like i just it's not i'm just not extreme like i'm not extreme like i just am leading this lifestyle now which you know we all admire i i admire so much i see you living the life of going through an awesome cut then having the the fit couples foodies which we'll talk about in a minute um but you know what how is your lifestyle now compared to when you were a, a competitor all honestly as i said like i never knew that it was the end when I stopped competing in 2017. I did not say the words I'm done because I kind of expected myself to go back and compete because I meant like I was not done because I was on the highest level as an amateur. Like I thought and I felt like the pro card could be a thing, but just my entire just like focus shifted and I I found I got a dream job that I loved and I was like, I can absolutely do this and compete at the same time. But am I willing to put to that extreme? I, I never got to that point because I didn't feel ready and not because I placed 10th or not, because again, it never bothered me what I placed or not placed. It was not part of the, the idea, but going like, really focusing on my profession and having my coaching business on the side and being like a really needed person at my my normal job i just try to find back to okay but how can i eat how should i how should i play my uh, plan my days around food and eating and training and all of that when other people plans my day for me it was just like a lot of things that was mix matching and and then i mean i moved <laughs> in in 2017 is that when you moved to the states in 2017 no 19 19 so for 2 years i was really like going back and forth should i compete again or not or should i just focus on my job um so i mean it took me to honestly maybe last maybe two years ago to find back to a, a body a physique that I really loved. And that is why I kind of don't feel the love for competing anymore because you will never feel as victorious as you do when you're at your leanest uh, until you actually become okay with who you are and stop identifying yourself depending on how many kilograms you weigh. Oh my God, I just got the chills, girl. 
I just got the chills. It's so true. It is hard though, because I mean, I am a figure online. I have my social media presence and I'm a bodybuilding girl, so I should be ripped. But again, I want to, I need to be balanced for me. I need to be balanced for the women and the men that I coach that struggle so hard to just feel energized. I have plenty of energy for everyone <laughs> that wants it. And I just want to share that. Like, how do you get to that state of being? So for me, competing is not what I turn to right now because I just love feeling this balance of eating things to perform in a certain way, not to look in a certain way. And all of a sudden, I just look better than I've done in years. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. That is such an evolutionary process, Ida. Like you, everything you just said, instead of doing it, you did it for you. Now you want to do it for others. And it's actually, I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, wow. Like when I met you a couple of years ago, the timelines are aligning here that it's been a couple of years that you've been getting into this groove of this lifestyle. So a couple, you were only in the States for like a year or two when I met you. And so now I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, and I remember having this conversation with you at First Form Headquarters, the first night of the event, like when you were talking about how like, I just, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Like I, I'm, I'm found, like I'm finding a balance. I'm starting to find the balance in myself. And it's, it's cool to hear this now, like catching up two years later after meeting you and, and how evolved your journey has truly come to just living this entirely instead of worrying about being the, you know, you're so much more than just a bodybuilding figure online. At least from like my perspective, I see you as an inspiration to lead the healthy lifestyle that you do and how you guys incorporate the cheat meals. And you guys, you guys have to check out the YouTube fit couple uh, foodies. They got, they, they vlog their um, entire cheat meals, which is so cool. And it isn't today. A cheat, did I see that today is a cheat meal today too, as well. Uh, so we post the videos on Wednesdays, but we record it most commonly on Saturdays because Saturdays, oh, okay. my clients are always super busy themselves to have calls and stuff. So that's where I have like time allocated to actually film and do our like, cause we, we bike ride a lot. Like we take our bikes and we have seen the entire LA area on bikes and it's super, super fun. It Amazing. makes you feel like you really experience it in a whole other way. Um, but we love, like I have always been a foodie. As I said, I have been 10 years of my life in the restaurant business, right? And I come from a family that really likes food. And one is a chef. And I mean, my mom always taught us to cook. And my dad had always fun experiments going on when he was cooking. So we had food. It's just a big thing. And yeah. uh, so, and honestly, every time when I feel my most, my best self, when I feel like I'm working the best physically, emotionally, and, and mentally, is when I actually have a day when I just eat whatever comes to mind. Sometimes that is a sweet green salad. And sometimes that might be a super greasy, I don't know, chili burger or whatever. I have no idea. I'm just putting <laughs> here. Or a, a big cheesecake or a brownie, whatever that might be. I do not restrict food. What I do is that I choose food that makes me feel good in my entire being. So Monday through Sunday, except on Saturdays, is when I eat things that I know my brain and my body, my muscles, we work well at. Because if I eat sugar, if I eat processed food, if I eat too fatty food, my ADHD brain does not cope. I could not sit here and talk to you and be focused if I did. So I have just chosen to choose food for my being and for my profession and for my, my lifting. So it's not hard for me anymore to say no to sugar in the weeks. 
Yeah. You eat to fuel your body, not really for like, you know, the taste and enjoyment of it. You're like, is this going to fuel me the right way? Am I going to feel good after I eat this? And when you ask that type of question, you're like, am I going to feel good after I eat this? You don't like any of you trying to choose between like outside of your cheat meal days, you're trying to choose between a burger or, you know, chicken, sweet potatoes. I mean, just that question, like, am I going to feel better after I eat? this, the burger and cheeseburgers, probably not. You're going to feel a little bit slowed down, right? So you choose to eat to fuel your body and for a function, which I love that. But the good thing is though, (laughs) when you are a foodie and when you have experienced so many different types of foods, you get an expert in making that chicken and rice and that broccoli and that sweet potato to taste heavenly because you know the flavors and you can enhance things. My life it's not boring, but that's because I love routines as well. And not all days will look the same, but I want them to look as similar as they can because then I know that I'm fu- functioning well. And I think that's what people forget to focus on. They focus on, oh, how will this pizza or this burger make me look? No. How will it make you feel? Yes, it, 110%. 110%. And what you just said there too is that you elaborate how because people are always like, how do you eat the same thing every day? And I'm like, how do you not eat the same thing every day? (laughs) Sometimes I just think that people have like 500 hours per day because it feels like they have too much time to choose. Can you imagine how many, like I, how many times, how many how many minutes or hours people waste on thinking what they're going to have for lunch, breakfast, and dinner? My ADHD brain, again, says no to that because the more choices I get, the more trouble I am in. Because if you ask me, hey, do you want to have a pizza for lunch? Or what do you want to have for lunch? Let's say that you ask me that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, uh, my brain starts to go fully um, it spreads all over the place it gives me back 500 different questions on will i do i want to have that chicken from that place or do i want to go to cheesecake factory and eat that or do i want to do that or do i or do i want to no how will i no that's how my brain goes so i don't want to have the question so true. It's so i true. can't <laughs> so you have to get to know yourself So when you start your journey in fitness and health, or just like, I just want to feel a little bit better, ask yourself, what would I feel better by? Tune in. Don't ask everyone else. And then when you know, like, maybe I can dig this for a long period of time, ask for help. How can I make this work in my life? 100% spot on. Ask for help. Coaches need coaches too. You know, even if coaches, yeah, coaches need coaches, people need coaches. There's a reason why you're professional in the space. Like I always say, stop trying to think about how you should be doing all of these things. It's going to create a transformation for you by the time that a professional is put into learning all of these things, learning all of the mistakes. That's literally what you're buying. You're buying that person's time, education, and mistakes that will literally accelerate your ability to put in the work that she's telling you to do and get the results, right? So, and plan your meals ahead of time so you don't have to think about it. (laughs) Exactly. I even write you your shopping list so you don't even have to think think about that. Just go. (laughs) So what are you guys having for your cheat meal this this Saturday? So this Saturday, we're not sure yet if it's going to be Saturday, Sunday, or Monday yet because we are finalizing the challenge that we have been doing. That's right. I saw that on your story. Yeah, you guys, this is the last week, right? Yes. So it's going to be like the final check-in and stuff like this this weekend. And depending on when we can do the trip to the, the facility that we have to go to, and cetera. It's going to be a little bit depending on that. But we are going to do what we crave cheat day. So we're going to eat exactly what we're feeling like that day because now we have been holding back a little bit since we're trying to cut. Um, if I just want to stay the same, I can eat whatever I want to on Saturdays. But lately, since I want to cut, I just need to be a little bit more careful with my decisions um but 
on Saturday or whenever that's going to happen, I am going to eat. I'm definitely going to have my brownies, I think, or cookies that I have in my freezer that looks really good. The big ass cookies. It's a uh, really big cookies. But yeah. they actually do not have refined sugar in them. So I'm really hyped for those. Uh, but I'm also really in a big mood for a big sandwich. That's what I want to have. Like, like a what nice kind of sandwich? Like Italian, like I want to have like prosciutto and, uh, and brie cheese and stuff. That <laughs> yeah. sounds bomb. Brie cheese. Okay, that sounds bomb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to be – or maybe – Maybe I can even go for a pizza just because I said pizza four times now. So maybe I'm craving a pizza. <laughs> so I will. I think I will wait to say exactly until I wake up that day, and I will let you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'm gonna watch that YouTube definitely. And all you guys should check it out. Fit couple, fit couples foodie. Am I saying that right? Fit couples foodie. Uh, fit couple foodies. So like a fit couple. Yeah, it, we have such a blast when we're doing it. But we did an Oreo challenge recent recently. So just a warning, do never pair an Oreo with hamburger dressing. That's disgusting. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, I saw that. Like, what were you guys thinking? Why did you do that? Because <laughs> everything in life cannot be of enjoyment. Just just kind of put it out there. <laughs> Sometimes just you just have to give. This is <laughs> that is just the oddest concoction like <laughs> even the hot sauce one was better honestly Ugh. Ugh. i still haven't had burger dressing again because i just no i did i did i have had her uh, burger dressing oh since it... <laughs> yeah that, that no can do PTSD moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah so no but it's gonna be a fun it's gonna be a fun video i do know that one of my favorite apple fritters is just around the corner from that place we're going to so maybe that's gonna be the start oh snap yeah um <laughs> and there's there's so many more questions that i want to be able to ask um um, I know the viewers will want to know, you just recently touched on uh, the cut that you're in. And I know we caught up prior to starting to kick off this podcast today about your cut. And you're like, I have to just be a little bit more careful. So, and I know you were like, six out of the seven days, though, this is what I do. So elaborate on that. What does, what does a cut mean to you? What are you doing in this cut that may be, you know, different from those that think it's got to be extreme? So honestly, I am eating the same food as I'm always eating. Um, I'm even trying to change it up a little bit more frequently as well, just to make sure that I get everything that I need. Um, but the only thing that I have changed is the amount that I eat. And I also withdraw two of my rice cakes. So instead of having four to five, I'm only allowed to have two rice cakes with peanut butter on per day uh, because that is my, I have that every single day, even on my cheat days. Like, honestly, it is my that's biggest. Your that's your kryptonite? That's your like favorite thing to eat? Rice crispy. what was it? Rice crispy treats and peanut butter? No, no, just a rice cake, a caramel rice cake. Oh, rice cake, a rice cake, okay. With peanut butter on top. Oh. It, I just have to. It's just like I don't feel whole without it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th that's pretty much the change that I've been doing. And, like, I am not trying to get my super, super leanest because I kind of wanted to take time. So I'm not doing an extreme. I'm just taking it very slowly so that I can kind of adapt my body to feeling like, okay, it's okay to be hungry. Just drink a little bit more water. Take take a warm cup of tea. Take some coffee or whatever. Yes, you have done this decision for yourself, so you better own up to it. Be okay with it. Uh, but during like our cheat days, normally I really don't even think about what I eat. Like as I said, I might have a full tube of peanut butter and rice cakes together with everything else that I'm having, but now I'm like, I'm really trying to stick more to good, better foods or just a very small amount of the good stuff. Like this last weekend, we did a taste review between Shake Shack and In-N-Out. And I took like three bites of each thing and a few fries. Like 
that is what I could do a normal day too, which I absolutely would if someone like, hey, can can we go and meet up on in and out And I was like, yeah, but I don't really feel like I want to eat it. But if they say, oh, I'm full, can you please have mine? I would say, yeah. I mean, I will not restrict myself. I would eat it, but it's not what I prefer. Um, but so, yeah, so the cheat days, my Saturdays has been a little bit smaller. But the trick I do there is that I start my morning making sure that I get protein enough and then that I do not like I, I kind of push together the meal. So I'm fuller for longer. So I'm not overeating it. So that's pretty much the tip there to make sure that I don't have the time to eat more. Yeah, that's good stuff there. And how you said like you know you're going to be hungry. So you just drink a little bit more water. I think a lot of people are afraid of being in a caloric deficit or going into a cut because they're going to be hungry. Well, like you can say you're going to be hungry, right? Like you're that you need to expect that. And some of your tips would be like drink more water or put your meals a little bit closer together so you feel fuller longer, right? I mean, uh, and that is when I ask myself, okay, what time of the day do I feel it's easier for me to be hungry? For me, it's so easy to be hungry in the beginning of the day. This is very like what many others might not feel like, but I'm so busy the first like eight hours of my day. So for me, it's just like I can just keep going and do things and get a lot of things done and then get my meals a bit closer in before I go to bed. Um, so it's all about, it's still calories and you like make it float. Exactly. Yes. I love that. And you can have Oreos and burger sauce in your cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but don't. <laughs> no. Seriously, guys, I knew you guys are going to check out it is um, like socials and Instagram and all that jazz. She's done. You've done such a credible and job with your with this cut that you've been in. It's been so cool to see the transformations that you share and where you were at the beginning. And I know you guys just went through this challenge and you're continuing on with this cut and seeing your transformation now. It's just man. Talk about body goals like you got your body is just amazing. Thank you. I know it's different, but I, I want it to be different. So hell yeah, girl. I love that. You do you, boo. Yeah, I will. (laughs) I will have my big arms. Well, you are also Chica with big arms. I have seen them. (laughs) The big arm club. (laughs) That's us. Yeah. I some people just have that. Like it is what it is. Yeah, for sure. No, I love I love everything that you share with the audience today, guys. Where can they find you? Can you share your Instagram handles, like the main ones that you're at? Yeah, so I have my name, Ida Bergfoot. I know it's a little bit tricky to know. It's a, it's actually mountain foot <laughs> in, in, in English. Mountain. So it's a berg oh, mean? is a mountain and foot oh. is foot. So m- mountain foot. <laughs> oh, that's really that cool. I'll, I'll it's just save you because, like, yeah, spellings and all that jazz. I'll put the links in, in the description below for you guys. Definitely follow her. You're such an inspiration, babe. Like, truly, you have such a big heart, like I said, and you want to help just so many people. So, and you have talk a little bit about your coaching so that they know where they can check out your coaching links and all that jazz, too. So, my coaching, my app is called I Be Fit. It is. I really find a power, it's a powerful name. Just like I love Warrior Babe. I always be like, shoot, that she took that. <laughs> Good for <laughs> you. Uh, no, I love it. I love the the entireness of that name. But it is I Be Fit. And on Instagram, that is team.ibfit if you want to see some transformation stuff. But otherwise, it's just ibfitcoaching.com is the website um, where you can see the reviews and stuff like that and the options that I have. Thank you so much for being on this show. I know that so many people in the bodybuilding world and or women that are just starting out on their journey that we spoke to the opinions and all that jazz to being able to enjoy being in a cut. All the things you elaborated on are going to help so many people that are going to listen to this podcast. So I appreciate your time. I appreciate your freaking energy. You truly do have energy to give to tons of people. (laughs) Um, you're You're an amazing inspiration. So everybody go check out Ida. And Ida, again, babe, thanks for being on this podcast today. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me on. I feel blessed of being the first guest to this podcast, uh, like <laughs> collaboration parts that you're doing. It's awesome. You're killing it. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Peace out. 
Real quick, the only ask I could ever have of you guys is to help spread the word so we can help more women lose body fat, build muscle, reach their goals, and feel insanely confident. And the only way we can do that is if you rate, review, and share this podcast. So the single thing I ask for you to do is if you could leave a review. It will take you 10 seconds, and it will mean the absolute world to me and may change the world of someone else.